This is a heavy box. This is the Congro Sobel T300. And I know absolutely nothing about this machine other than it says T300. And this part right here is missing in the picture. But that's all I know. So let's get into it. Let's figure it out. My first impressions, it's a big machine. Like big, big. 20 inches wide on the bench, 26 inches deep, and that includes bed travel, and 35 inches tall with a loaded spool. And look, no cross piece. What do you think? I kind of like it. I like this style. Tell me in the comments below. Are we done with these? Do we even need them anymore? Aesthetics wise, it's probably one of the most beautiful machines I've ever looked at. The aluminum extrusions, the panels that keep everything nice and tidy. It is just one gorgeous machine. It's got like a presence. Now I had no idea what the price was when I unboxed this and assembled it. And I remember sitting back and looking at this machine on the bench and thinking, you know, this feels like peak Bedslinger tech. This has got to be a thousand dollar printer, but it's not. In fact, it's not even close. And we'll go over pricing just here in a moment. I think you'll be surprised. Now, before we get into all of the features of this machine in great detail, let me quickly run down a couple of the specs. This is a large format printer, meaning it is larger than 300 millimeters cubed in build volume. And it's actually really fast. This is running Clipper and it prints at speeds up to 300 millimeters per second, and it can produce a benchy in about 12 to 14 minutes, which is pretty darn quick. It also has a filament runout sensor, auto Z offset and auto bed leveling, and it has a cool little light on the tool head too. Do you think you can guess what this machine's price is? With everything going on in 3D printing and prices going down to the bottom? See if you can guess, comment below on what you think the price of this machine is, and you'll see at the end of the video. I wanna see if you're right. Now, I don't wanna bore you with the assembly and I'll have chapters available, so if you don't wanna see a 15 second montage of assembly, go ahead and click forward. The unboxing experience was really nice. It took about 30 minutes. There's a lot of parts. Um, I don't think it's anything that a novice couldn't put together, but what really stood out to me was just how heavy duty this machine is built. The braces on the back of these uprights are insane. They're huge, just like on the T500. It's really impressive. And so when you get this machine finished, put together on the bench, I mean, like I said earlier, it has a presence. This is one big machine, and uh, you gotta have kind of a good sized bench to put it on. Let's start with the motion system. It's running a single 12 millimeter hidden linear rail on the X. It's running dual hidden 12 millimeter linear rails on the Z, and it's running dual hidden linear rails on the Y, but they're offset at 90 degrees. And it has a nice cable drag chain. Now it prints at speeds upwards of 300 millimeters per second, like I mentioned earlier. And take a look at this. This right here was actually printed at 300 millimeters per second. And you'll see that closer when we get to the print results. This machine is fantastic. It's like one I wanna keep. I normally give them all away, but I feel like I wanna keep this one. Okay, let's talk about build volume. This is a big machine coming in at 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 350 millimeters on the Z with a heated build plate that gets up to 100 C which is pretty standard. It has a double-sided PEI coated spring steel sheet and it has a Meanwell power supply that's rated for 150 watts. Now, interesting fact, it's big brother, the T500, has a 500 millimeter cubed build volume with a 600 watt Meanwell power supply. Yikes. Well, it's Meanwell, means quality. All right, it's tool head time. It has a dual gear direct drive extruder with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle that comes stock. And of course it reaches temps up to 300 C. And I feel like a broken record saying that because a lot of the 3D printers or almost all of them that are coming out nowadays, these are the specs. Now it can print all of your regular filaments, PLAs, PTGs, ABSs, ASAs, TPUs. It can print all of it. Clipper, you heard me say it earlier. Let me explain what that means. And I apologize to those of you who are watching who already know how to use Clipper, just humor me for a moment. Clipper is the firmware that controls these 3D printers, and Clipper is just a more cutting edge, bleeding edge version of that firmware. This is a 4.3 inch color touchscreen running Clipper as the interface. Now this is actually a computer. This is running Linux, it's running Debian actually, and it's the ARM processor version called Armbian. Now, seeing that this is a computer, this is quite a bit more powerful than some of the other 3D printers that we're accustomed to that are running the Marlin firmware. Now, I'm gonna make this a thing for all of the Clipper machines that I look at. I want you to take this Clipper machine, right, which is Linux, and I want you to install Doom on it. Yes, 
Yes, you can install Doom. You can hook up a keyboard and mouse and you can play Doom on this. Go check it out. It's called Chocolate Doom. Oh, and this is a MakerBase board. The default user is MKS and the password is MakerBase if you want to SSH into it and uh, play with that Armbian. And if you need help installing Doom or you want to show off what you've done, join our Discord. I'll have that link on the screen and in the description, we'd love to see it. Seriously, I want to see it. I want to see all of these Clipper machines running Doom. All right, now that that's out of the way, back to business here. Now, because this is Clipper, the moment you connect this to your wireless network, you're going to have a web management interface that appears. So you'll be able to take the IP address from the interface, put that into your web browser on your mobile device or desktop, and you're gonna be able to remotely manage and monitor the machine. Now, let me caution you, this is really important. By default, the Fluid interface, that's the web management interface on this particular installation, does not have authentication set up. So the moment you turn on Wi-Fi, Anyone on your network can do really bad things to this 3D printer through that web interface. So I'm really going to recommend that you go into that interface, you go down to settings, go up to authentication, then add a user, type in a name and a password, and secure this machine. I'd also probably change the MKS password, the SSH, just so no one can mess with you. Slicing is important, and we have some fantastic slicers in our industry. We have Idea Maker, we have Prusa Slicer, we have the Bamboo Studio, we have Orca Slicer, right, which is the popular one right now, but Comgro has their Comgro Slicer, which is basically a reskinned version of Cura. I'm not a big fan of Cura, mostly because I just don't have a lot of experience in it, but there is an Orca Slicer profile for this machine's big brother, the T500. So I imagine the moment that these machines end up in the hands of the general public, there will be a T300 Orca Slicer profile. Now getting prints to the machine can be done wirelessly. This does have Wi-Fi. It's really simple to connect to your network. It's done on the touch interface here. Or of course you can do it the old school way, which is actually how I was doing it here in the studio, which is with a sneaker net, you know, the USB key, walk it over and put it in the machine. All right, now it's time for print results. Everything that you see here was sliced up in the Comgro Cura Slicer at a 0.25 layer height, and it was printed all at 300 millimeters per second. Polymaker is one of my official sponsors, right? So if you'd like to support us, you can click that link right there. We'd appreciate it. This was printed in Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro Green. This is their Polysonic Red. This is their Polylite PLA Yellow, and this is Polylite PLA Pro White. I will have links to these models in the description below. I picked them up all off of uh, printables and uh, I'll tag the creators in there as well. This is a Super Mario pipe and like I said, we'll take a closer look. I think it turned out fantastic for a print that was done at a 0.25 layer height at 300 millimeters per second. You can see uh, that there is some motion uh, artifacts on the surface, um, but a lot of this is the actual model itself. On this one here, I was actually playing with temperatures. So if you look really closely, about halfway up, you can kind of see that, um, that that's what I was doing. So that's not a reflection on the printer at all. That's, that's just me playing with temperatures with Polysonic. I, I got a little excited there. But anyway, that is a fantastic print, and uh, you'll be seeing that in some content soon. Now, this is the 12 minute Benchy, which actually came out at about 14 minutes or so. It's good, I mean, it's decent for a Benchy that was completed in about, I think total of 14 minutes from the time you hit print, it heated up. And uh, I think it's really good for a 12 to 14 minute Benchy. This Super Mario coin box is actually pretty sick. I like it, it's got a removable lid. But this is pretty cool. This was printed in both of those filaments, but one interesting fact, right? So while you're looking at the uh, quality of it here, the print quality, I was playing around with temperatures on this machine because I noticed that it was doing this pipe, um, I think at like 220, and it was having no problems at 220 C at 300 millimeters per second. And so that's what got me to start playing with polysonic and lowering the temperature. But I lowered the temperature and I kept going down and I kept going down and I kept going down until I literally got down to 200 C and it was still printing at 300 millimeters per second at 200 C. And that blew my mind. So anyway, I bumped the temperature back up because that was about the limit. I wasn't gonna get any lower than that. So now when it came to this big cube, I was doing the same thing. But I had an issue where when it was making these huge grid passes on this large of a surface, 
at 200, I think about 205C or something like that, it started to struggle and have problems. So anyway, I bumped it right back up to 220 and, and it finished. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, we put these together with 3D Gloop, right? So this is uh, the industry's best adhesive uh, for filaments. Um, it's not a glue, even though it says Gloop, it's not a glue. It's actually a chemical adhesive and it creates a chemical weld or a bond between the parts. So it actually fuses them together so if you tried to tear them apart, your prints would actually separate at the layer lines, not actually where the gloop is holding it together. So um, I'll put a link on the screen um, and in the description, uh, but go check them out. Um, fantastic product. And also they're a sponsor of a content. Okay, I promise we are almost done. There's only two things left. One is price and two is what I ultimately think about this machine. Right now, this machine is available for $549. No, seriously, that's not a joke, 549. That's insane. Look at where we were a year ago or even two years ago. This machine, I'm telling you, it'd be a thousand dollar machine or more, $549. And I'm being told that there's coupons available. Um, you'll have to look in the description. I'll update it when I find out exactly how you get one of those coupons. But I'm being told that there's hundred dollar off coupons that make this a $449 machine. Oh my gosh, insane. All right, it all comes down to this, right? The question, would I recommend this 3D printer to someone? And uh, that answer, absolutely. This is one solid machine. And uh, I'm super impressed. And I think for a price point of 549, even $449, if you can get that coupon code, that is a no brainer. You are getting a helmet class 3D printer that's clipper based, that's loaded with every feature and uh, aesthetically just super impressive. Um, at a price that we've never even seen in 3D printing before. And this makes me wonder, what's next? What, what else is Sobel and Comgro cooking up? Actually, I know, but that's another video. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.